Coming up on the Unmasking Minds Empowering Mental Health Conversations podcast, a new set brings a new conversation. Like there's multitudes of reasons why people, like a woman would date a married man when it's convenience. She don't wanna be married. Women dating married men and the effects that it could have on their mental health. That emotional impact can be detrimental. It can be really detrimental to a person's heart. We will walk you through this topic and we will unpack why some women stay involved with men that are already taken. Make sure you stay tuned because it's coming up on the podcast. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your boy, Anthony Redmond, also known as The Doc. Welcome to the Unmasking Minds, Empowering Mental Health Conversation Podcast, the show where we are aiming to break the stigma surrounding mental health. And we want everyone involved in the conversation because if we all work together to help tackle this problem, we will be able to inspire change. Today's topic is a little different, but before we jump in, let me give you some context. According to a study found in Psychology Today, 90% of women say they once took interest in a man they knew was married. Well, while we are not here to judge, we know being with a married man can impact a woman's mental health. And to help us talk about this is Alexis Wallace, Rashawn Foster, and Shiny Cook. Welcome, ladies. Welcome to my podcast show. And let me start here. I, I wanted seasoned women to be on this podcast show because the generation, the 30s and the 20s is different, okay? And this is something that I want to take part in because in my office, private practice, I see a lot of women coming into my office dealing with grief and depression, anxiety, sadness, stress, due to the fact that they are involved in a relationship with a married man, or some people call it they in a relationship and they are considered a side piece. Mm-hmm. Okay? So they are in love now and they are dealing with mental health problems. So I have Alexis Wallace with me, and Alexis is a former colleague of mine. She actually worked in my private practice. And, um, and she has a lot of experience in mental health. And I thank you, Alexis, for being a part of this and help me navigate this conversation. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Alexis. So I um, went to college. I got my undergrad BSW from Mary Grove College in Detroit. And I got my master's at Wayne State. Currently, I am a trainer for OWDT with the state of Michigan, and I am working on a stage play, and it will cover some of this information. Okay, I will wait to bring it live to this podcast. (laughs) And Shani, tell me a little bit about yourself. I have two children. I'm a grandmother. I have um, been lifing, as life has been (laughs) lifing me. Um, So I guess I, well, I have a lot of experience in different situations and the situation, the topic that we will be discussing today. So I'm excited to be here and to give some of my feedback on that. And Ms. Foster. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here with my sisters. (laughs) Um, uh, Rashawn Foster, I also go by the nickname Sun. And I am a professional butterfly. So that covers me being an artist. Um, a storyteller, a story curator, and a writer, uh, writing in many, many genres. Um, and one of the things, uh, one of the types of writings that I do most often is therapeutic journaling. Um, I come to this conversation having uh, heard many voices um, from different life phases and being a witness and having front row seats uh, to uh, this conversation and being on both sides of the conversation. Ladies, I appreciate you for being a part of the Unmasking Minds Empowering Mental Health Conversations podcast. Thank you so much. And um, when you hear this topic, what the first thing pop into your mind? 
for me, just jumping into it, I have been in one of those situations. I have experienced those situations. But for me, experience it and knowing certain you know people that have lived there and seeing them go through certain situations or growing up with my faith knowing that there's a cause and effect and for me my values I didn't want I don't want to experience that I don't like when you speak on karma I don't want that to come back to me and then me being a woman I would have to think about me putting myself in the position of being in that other woman's shoes and it's just something that you know being a woman being supportive, you know what I'm saying? Not causing somebody else that pain. Okay, I understand. So how did that impact your mental health? Well, mental health wise. Stress, I mean, anxiety, yeah, sadness, well, that's all a part of mental health, okay? Because we all long to love. I love love, I, you know what I'm saying? I love love and everybody wants to be loved. And when you're not giving out what you, when you're not receiving what you're giving out, it does affect your mental health a lot. Mm -hmm. You wanna share like what part of you say you impact your mental health. Be comfortable. We just talking. Well, I will say I thank God for a strong mom because I she I she the morals and values that she did and the foundation that she created for me and my siblings, um, and watching the things that she went through life and the things that I went through younger young as a young kid all the way up teenage and a young adult. Um, it just taught me to be strong. And so for, you know, being in a situation where I had did that, um, it didn't affect me as well. It taught me what I did not want. When mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. enter into a relationship with someone that I actually fell in love with. It taught me what I didn't want, I don't want to receive, and just my faith and my, and everything of, you know, God and everything, you know, it just, I didn't want that, my values. And then me having a daughter, what am I gonna tell my daughter? I don't want her to go down that path that I did. You know what I mean? So that's, I guess you could say that's how it affected me. Ms. Foster, when you hear the study from Psychology Today that 90% of women, 90% stated that they were involved in a situation like this. What do you hear? These are true data, these are just true facts. What comes to your mind? What comes up for me is that there's, you know, it's trends and patterns. Okay. It's, um, it, there's the ethic and the morals and, and the religiosity, the spirituality, the adultery, the legal part, mm -hmm. like all of that comes up and it makes a person, a woman shamed and mm -hmm. in, in a place to, to, to be guilted, mm -hmm. to be labeled, um, and there's also the human nature part of it that we don't talk about, um, is that when people have an affinity towards someone, um, and like there's multitudes of reasons why people, like a woman would date a married man, one, it's convenience. She don't want to be married. Okay, <laughs> or don't want to be married at that okay, particular... <laughs> <laughs> don't want to be married. Be married. <laughs> I'm 55. Okay. I've been single my whole life. Okay. Right? And okay. so have an affinity towards somebody. Might have been a long lost love. Somebody that I have known for... Before we were even born. Our grandparents knew each other. Our, his, you know, his mother, my father, and their siblings knew each other. We met in high school. He's been married twice, mm. right? That's my spiritual husband. So, okay, I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong, right? right but this right. is the story that yes. we told ourselves. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. No, yes. no. Yes. Right. And we just have a real conversation, right. okay? Right. So go ahead, yeah. feel free. So that's the story that I've told myself that that's really my husband. I don't care who he marries <laughs> legally. Yeah. That's my husband. If I call at the drop of a dime and I can say, hey, look, this is a situation. I'm in this dilemma. Can I talk to my friend? I don't have to say, can I talk to my friend? But sometimes I will. I said, I need to talk to my friend. And then the husbandly ways that he has always had towards me mm -hmm. kick in. Now, and I've never been a wife, but we respond to each other in a way that is matrimonial. If I have a need, he's here to protect He's here to serve, and I'm there to protect, to provide my feminine power to him. And it's not necessarily just opening my legs. It's mm -hmm. I'm here to support you. You're mm -hmm. having a problem. Mm -hmm. Let me listen to you. So my feminine ways will show up. Then there's 
different situations where um, uh, you just get caught up. There's the lies. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we stay because, oh, we thought he was married. And so it wasn't an issue. And then we find out three months later, hey, I'm having dreams that he's married. Let me go do my research. <laughs> oh, I done found out some sh Oh, okay. But let me ask this question. Have you ever been married? Yeah, I've been married before. Period. More dreams come, more research come. Two weeks later, have, are you, are, have you been married? Now you're still married. Well, yeah, but okay. 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 So okay. lies. Those. So men are telling lies to yeah. capture your heart, mm -hmm. to keep you close mm -hmm. To them for their own personal oh, reason. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna definitely have a show with men <laughs> to follow up from this show oh, this because cause we need to unmask this because because this is a problem that I see. Like I said, in my private practice with people coming in and suffering from depression. So, Miss Wallace, so tell me, why do you think women stay in the relationship on a mental level? So I'm a, I'm gonna be transparent and give you some um, frame of reference piece for historical. When I grew up, I remember my father saying, a man can have as many women as he can take care of. Oh, yeah. I remember my father saying that. So I grew up thinking that was a norm. I think if he has, you know, he can take care of two, three women, he can have two, three. So I have myself, then my sisters have their mother. So family time became normal. We would, we would all be together. So that was a frame of, of reference for me. Um, but the emotional impact. So as I got older, I understood that that emotional impact can be detrimental. It can be really detrimental to a person's heart. And we become architectures of, architects of our own life. And through that architecture, we build on how we want to look and how our family wants to look. So sometimes we create a fallacy. He's going to leave her. He's not, he's going to leave her. He loves me. He's going to leave her. It's not working out. So we begin to believe the lies. We begin to, we create our own storyline and we start buying into all that and we lose ourselves mm -hmm. and we start losing ourselves. We lose pieces of ourselves day by day because we become so emotionally connected in that man. We forget our us. Mm -hmm. We forget our us mm -hmm. and who we are as a woman and what we really deserve. How are holidays going to look for me? Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like? You know, um, what are we going to do on Christmas and New Who am I going to bring New Year in with? So that begins to impact my thoughts and the loneliness. And that's when the depression kicks in and that sadness mm -hmm. kicks in. And sometimes even with um, um, holly, having the holiday blues, that's real mm -hmm. for people. So those things kick in in your life and you wonder, where, where, where do I fall in in the hierarchy of your life mm -hmm. as being the side piece? the other woman, you know, so where you start having those feelings and you just don't know where to place those emotions. So what happens? You deal with loss. I'm angry. I'm blaming. I allowed this to happen. So we go through all those stages in our life. We just don't know where to put it. And then when we bring it to the man's attention, and it's not all men. Oh, you tripping. <laughs> you tripping now. <laughs> or you knew what it was. You knew what it is. Right. So you start feeling like, well, I can't even talk to you. But sometimes men sometimes go to those places for peace. You don't know what's going on in his yeah, house, that's right. and you just know what he's telling you. But mm -hmm. guess how many sides is his side, her side, and the truth. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just create yeah, our own. Exactly. We become yeah, architects exactly. of the lies too. And, and I like that you said the truth. And you know, as being a mental health provider, I'm unpeeling the truth constantly. Okay. And your truth, Miss Foster, is different from Mrs. Cook. Miss Cook truth and. Miss Smiley's truth. Everybody's truth is different. My truth is different, okay? As being a man listening to this conversation, because I'm pretty sure when I bring the next episode here with men <laughs> right. talking about this, and you guys gonna hear something totally different, yeah. right? Because as you said, they prolong it. Mm -hmm. They prolong these lies, as you call it. Mm -hmm. But maybe it is true. What? Right, wait a minute, and maybe it is truth. Because you, you said something, okay? You said, I said this topic is going to be different, right? Right, right, right? I heard you say that something else is going on mm -hmm. and making him keep coming back and making him want to be a part of this relationship. Mm -hmm. And it was known that this is what it is. This, this is what it is, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so, so when your emotions get involved mm -hmm. and women, you know, we, we all love differently, right? And now 
It's too heavy for me to deal with. Yeah. It's too heavy for me to deal with. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And you don't think it's heavy on the other end too as well? well for the man? It is. The you, thing is that there was, yeah. there is, um, mm, I like this. there's a <laughs> lot of conflict. We were mm -hmm. shown a lot of different ways. Yes. And told a lot of different mm -hmm. things growing up, right? Yes. You hear your grandma say, keep your dress down and your pants up. Mm -hmm. You hear the uh, women uh, in the generation just, you know, before you, mm -hmm. don't come home with an uh, empty pockets. Mm -hmm. Then you have your daddy mm -hmm. telling you things like, um, don't prove to him, don't do it, don't have sex with a man to prove that you love him, do it because you want to. Okay, well, when you start doing, then you go, well, I want to. Now, when do you stop? And then you also see different people as, you know, as a child, you see, you see the, the grown women married, or being involved in these relationships. So then you go, okay, well, it's a norm. It's a trend. It's a pattern that I see. Thus, that is normal or normalized. Mm -hmm. But no, and we hear about adultery in the in the church, mm. but we and it's wrong. But we see that it's right at home mm. because that's where that power structure comes from. You've developed a relationship. There's emotions there, and he has some financial income that's taking care of some things. So then it becomes, you know, it's a a, a family moment. So you think that there's nothing wrong with it. However, when that person does can't take you around in public, mm -hmm. can't take you to the holiday, you can't bring, because you don't know who he knows in your yeah. family, right? right, right. <laughs> so then you're caught in this wanting to stay, needing to go, and you just go back and forth, back and forth, and your mind gets tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your mind gets tired. And you become comfortable with the routine. Mm -hmm. So the routine, I've accepted it. He told me what it is. He's taking care of me, right. so why won't I stay? Why don't mm -hmm. stay? But then the other piece for me is, why did he come? Men are hunters. Men won't go after what they want. They hunt. Mm -hmm. So why did he come for me? I was fine. Leave me alone. I was fine. Why did he come for me? And maybe sometimes they don't even tell you you're married. But why did he step out in the first place? I agree to disagree, though. I, do, I agree to disagree, and I will tell you why. Because a lot of men, they do tell the truth. They're going to be honest. A lot of men, if they know they're not leaving their wife, they're going to tell you, up front, I'm married. I'm not leaving my wife. Mm -hmm. They're gonna leave, they're gonna give you that decision to say, yeah or nay, I'm gonna mess with you or no, nah, I'm not gonna mess with you. It's up to you to say yes Absolutely. or no. Absolutely. And so even with Sean, as what you were saying, I like what you say you went you went back to the foundation. It does start at the foundation because I recently went through a loss, as Alexis knows. Um, I was engaged for a few years and um, I think childhood trauma has a lot to do with everything for mm -hmm. different, for everyone. Um, maybe not for everyone, but I feel like for everyone. Um, I feel like the foundation is very important too. And the reason why I said that is because when I went through what I went through with my ex-fiance, um, growing up, I didn't have a really close relationship with my mom, not knowing what they went through, not knowing, not being able to, not being told, I love you. So mm -hmm. being, for us to tell them, I love you, it was out the norm for them. Because for my mom to say, I love you to this day, to me, she says it, but it's uncom it don't seem natural. Do I think she mean it? Yes, I do. But it's just uncomfortable because that's not what they were raised how they were raised to say, I love you, but my granddaddy, he cheated on my grandma. And so that was something that they saw. They didn't like it, and they wonder why did my grandmother, you know, put up with it so long. So it's just a child, it's, it's the foundation, mm -hmm. it's how you raised and how you come up and what you see. And so with me going through what I went through with my ex-fiance, me and my mom, we began to be come closer where I started sharing, sharing some things that I went through while I was little and I mm -hmm. thought she knew. Mm -hmm. So that goes into looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for yeah. a father figure. And so when you go through childhood trauma, that plays a part when you're looking for love in all the wrong places and you're making all these poor decisions. Mm -hmm. And then it can carry over to your children if you're not teaching your children. Mm -hmm. So that's why I agree to disagree. Yeah, and if I, that I, makes sense. No, it, it makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> yep, yep. And, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't deny that's your right. 
<laughs> because that's the way you feel. That's your sensation, your experience, and you keep it and you keep it dear to your heart. And that's why I always say everybody's frame of reference mm -hmm. is coming mm -hmm. from a different place. Yeah. yeah. So where, um, like I said, why did he hunt for me anyway? I was fine. Mm -hmm. um, what was going on in his situation mm -hmm. that made him want to step outside his situation? Mm -hmm. So I can, you know, play devil's advocate on those people at the end for women. How that impacts our fit. It, it impacts our whole being from your mm -hmm. toenail to your hair follicle. <laughs> it impacts everything about you, mm -hmm. how you move, how you get dressed. What is his expectation? That's for sure. You know, how do, does he want to eat? You know, you become that um, pseudo wife to him. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm his wife on the other end, so I'm going to make sure he's good. So I'm going to give him, like um, Shrill says, everything I missed at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you That's give me it. attention. Yeah. So you give me everything I missed at home. So you become everything he's to be. And most men say, she became my piece. Mm -hmm. The side piece becomes his piece. Mm -hmm. So you look at all angles of why. And why do we stay and why do we put up with that? So you have to ask yourself. And it has to be an internal decision. And like I just said, not passing any judgment. Everybody has their own frame of reference mm -hmm. for why they continue to stay in those situations. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and viewers, I want you to understand that I will have a piece with men on this show to discuss from a different angle why they stay in a relationship. I want to say a few things, but I'm not going to say it, right? Because I'm going to let, that's not, hey, this is your show, right? And this, are, this show is for women out there who are dealing today with this. And they are madly in love. And, and one particular case I want to share, as you, this lady came into my office, 15 years, 15 years as being the mistress. Mm -hmm. And she's crying, I'm looking at this lady, she's crying, and she's so depressed, and it was to the point that she wasn't eating, mm -hmm. so I had to recommend medication to help her sleep and help, help her calm her racing thoughts and so she could start to eat food again, mm -hmm. okay? And I asked her a key question. I said, well, why do you stay? You see the impacts of this, why do you, he said, I'm in love with him. I'm so in love. And he recently told me that he's not leaving his wife. And that's, I'm falling apart after 15 years. And she said, I'm not leaving. Cause she didn't give herself a time frame. She said, I'm not leaving. She said, I'm 58 years old. Mm -hmm. She's out. She yeah. said I'm 58, yeah. Honestly, something within herself. Yes. And one thing I do thank God for is that with my mom, when I was growing up, um, she told, she taught her children, she said, well, for me and my sister, she said, don't depend on a man to do anything for you. You got to survive in this world. Mm -hmm. And so those are the words that keep going on in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not... I hope don't want to take this the wrong way, but I know a lot of women or, you know, I'm going to say us women with us financial stability and all of that, it, you know, but you can't really just depend on a man to be your sole provider. You got to have some type of backbone or some type of whatever to, or want to have something for yourself, you know, value yourself to go out and get something because, you know, if he ain't, if you, if he lose his job, how y'all going to make it? It's for me, it's about partnership supporting each other, having each other's back. And then if you don't ever get married, what? You got to be able to take care of yourself. Or what are you going to teach your children? How to stand on their own two feet? I don't want to take care of no man, and I don't want to take care of my kids for the rest of their days. Not even my grandkids. I help, <laughs> but I ain't going to do all of that. I, so I really do thank God for my mom. I think that helped me too. I'm, I'm a thousand percent sure. Her saying, do not depend on a man to do everything for you. So when a man come up and say, oh, I do this, I can do that. No, I don't need you to do that. I can do that for myself. Yeah. However, me, I love love. First of all, if you make me feel secure, you make me feel safe. If you're going to provide or if we can work it out together, you do this, I do that, we got a team partnership, we can make it happen, but I'm not going to live off the thing of what you can do for me. And after 15 years, so yeah. she gave 15 years of her being to this man. She can't get it back. She can't get that back. Mm -mm. You can't recapture, go back and say, I'm old time travel and get this 15 years back. So where did she go? Did she, and she said, I'm not leaving. Said, I'm, not leaving. I'm not leaving. She said, I'm not leaving because I'm in love and it is what it is. I have to learn. She said, I'm in counseling mm -hmm. to learn how to cope with this now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. 
So she and, had- and I can't I, I couldn't say that you're wrong to feel that way. Right, right, right. My goal was to make sure she's stable enough to function in this relationship. When I said she didn't give herself a time frame, I had come to that conclusion like, okay, I want to be married, but I can't marry somebody else's husband mm-hmm. if all three mm-hmm. of us didn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I gave that person the option. Okay, so you, you don't look like you don't believe her, but you're talking about moving to Ghana and you're including me in this conversation with moving to Ghana. So is she coming with us? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to have a sit-down right. conversation. So, But in the beginning of the conversation, years ago, I said, I am not going to be in this relationship with you. I'm not going to be dating you five years and you're still married. So then that's when clock started nice. ticking. Not for him because I can't give him an ulterior motive. I have to give it to myself. So that's talking about self love, self acceptance, self accountability. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, then ooh. it's like, I then I began to watch then. I'm being like the social scientist. I'm looking <laughs> to see, okay, well, he said we're doing this. Okay, well, we need to talk about money, bank accounts, travel, like where we're going to live. Crickets, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, we at the end of about five, six years mm-hmm. now. We're going to break a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> It happens in relationship. relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started putting myself, okay, well, we in past five years, six years, okay, what do I need to know about this relationship? So if he moving left, are we moving left together? Okay, well, you moving left and, we, the, okay, I'm moving right, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. And remember what I said years ago, I am I am not doing this, not because of whatever is going, it's, I For need you. to make myself clear. Right. And then another thing that I learned is that, yeah, nobody else can make you happy. Mm-hmm. Right. Nobody else can take care of you like you take care of you. So then that is where, well, what does make me happy? Because what they, cause it could have passed away. If they had gotten married, she'd become a widow. But that's why I'm right. figuring out now. The, mm-hmm. the the key points that you just said, being a 50-year-old woman and I had my first I had my first kid when I was 19 and I had my daughter when I was 25. So for me, I've never been by myself before, but I've never been married. Mm-hmm. But I do desire to get married. So how long do you give yourself to stay in a situation and wait for someone to get themselves together to get married? Time flies so fast mm-hmm. like tomorrow it's gonna be january <laughs> not and literally you know, like, think, like for them to give the time to for them to get themselves ready like mm-hmm. what does readiness look like for me mm-hmm. what does readiness mm-hmm. look like for us yeah like what are the questions that i need to know i'm 55 mm-hmm. right all of us are south north mm-hmm. of 50 so what does my quality of life look like exactly you know there was a sister i can't remember her name she um I heard her uh, in an interview and somebody asked her about like dating. What does dating look like for her? And she gave a beautiful, beautiful, eloquent speech. And I can't remember all of it, but I remember her saying this, giving the story of I would love to meet, be in a room and meet the man across the room and we lock eyes and we Mm. have this beautiful love affair. But I also have to come to the reality that may never happen. Mm-hmm. So then mm-hmm. she said, I may have, basically, I may have to keep some on rotation. So can you discuss the potential impacts that w- this will have on a women's mental health, on women's mental health? Mm-hmm. The potential impacts. What's the yeah, potential yeah. impacts? Potentially. Uh-huh. So I'm going to go back to the 15-year relationship. Mm-hmm. Where does that lie with me of coming to age? We're at the stage of our life. 15 years, and I don't know how old this woman was, but um, I, we're at a stage our age, like we got more years, be, um, you know, we don't have that many more years in front of us when you get in your 50s. Right. right. So what does that end of life stuff look she like for me? She was 58 when she came to me. So hmm. yeah, so think that about that. seven years ago. Yeah, so no. think about that. What does that look like? She was in there for 15 years prior before yeah. oh, coming wow. to me. Right. right. So okay. you think about the loneliness. What does that do? Well, that also oh. makes you think mm-hmm. about make you think about her thought process yeah. where she's at. Mm-hmm. You know, being fifty eight, you've been in a situation for fifteen years. Yeah. Somewhere, something should have clicked right. way before then. And we would you you would want to, <laughs> but you know you would want to think that it. But it doesn't happen. Love don't happen like that. Yeah, love that's don't, that self love. That, temp- yeah, that tenderness too. and that love. Yeah. and what that man is providing you. In those 15 years, what did that look like for her? Yeah. You know, what did that look like for her? So when she's starting to think about, I've been with this person, you want me to start over? 
or suggest that mm-hmm. I start over. Right. But she's already said, because self-determination would say, you meet them where she is. Mm-hmm. So she's already said, I'm here. I'm in it. I'm not going nowhere. Mm-hmm. So how do I how do I get her to be comfortable in that situation? Because mm-hmm. she says she's not leaving. She's, not, she's leaving. not leaving. And they are very, both of them, her, the guy that she's dating, they both very highly educated. Yeah. Very highly educated. I can't really say anything because confidential. Right, 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 right. But, and I'm looking at her. Beautiful lady, very smart, very educated. But she's madly in love. Yeah. She told me she never experienced love like that ever. Mm-hmm. Right? And 15 years, and she was 58 when she came to me seven years ago. Wow. And I'm sitting like, wow. And I'm younger. You know, seven years ago, I'm, I'm way younger than I am right now, right? And then she's older than me. And I'm sitting looking like, wow. Wow. Yeah. To me, she's missing something. It's something with, I, I'm not even going to say the man. It's something within her. Mm-hmm. Lack of self-esteem. Um... Um, the self-love, all of that. It's something with her. I would even go back to childhood or whatever. I delved so deep and was nothing there. No childhood trauma, no nothing. I mean, an upper middle class family she was brought up in. I mean, a wonderful life, private schools, private college. So he just put it on her and she fell in love. <laughs> put it, put it and, in, and, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he just put it on her. She just was like, with this. And then sometimes <laughs> women get like, 15 years I'm in it. I'm committed. I am loyal to yeah. this dysfunctional situation. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm loyal to dysfunction. Yeah, I'm invested in it. Right. So do you want me, I, should I start over? Now I have to tell my story again, get comfortable again, right. start taking again, expose myself again, mm-hmm. maybe it ain't gonna work out. This ain't broke, you know, so I ain't gonna try to figure this ain't broke, so I'm gonna keep going with this. We happy, leave us alone. But it was now, I gotta broke. figure, but I gotta figure out, but if I decided to stay, something is working for me. Mm-hmm. And it's if you, 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 you it's, it's, it's some kind it's of an thing, addiction. it's something <laughs> that you get from, <laughs> when I she's say addiction, addiction. <laughs> it may be yes. an addiction that she's getting from me. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I like this conversation because we're unmasking this right now. She did say that his knowledge base, his educational level, his articulation is, is for her. Mm-hmm. Due to her educational level is so high that she couldn't find an African-American male that would meet those needs, right? Mm-hmm. Only he could. And um, I wish I could talk about their profession, right, but I right, can't. Right, right. And... Um, and she, she says it, it's very slim to none you to be what? men yeah. out there to yeah. meet those needs. What she was looking for, okay? What she was looking for. So 15 years, you yes. with this man, you close yourself off. Because it's some, let me just say this. It is some beautiful black, intelligent it is. It black is. men yes. works of art out here. Smart. They just work the art. They they out here. They're out here. But if you committed yourself and been loyal to a situation and you didn't allow yourself to blossom into those other things and experience other things, you settled for that. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's her thing. And not gonna judge her thing. That's her thing. But don't say I can't find it. You didn't allow yourself to be open enough to find it. Because they are you listen. (laughs) They they don't don't limit yourself. I don't know about all these, but they out here. And I and my authority said, you guys. And this this Another question, what coping mechanism would you offer women in situations like this to sustain their mental well-being? Oh, I just recently transitioned. I just recently graduated. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what has worked for me. Okay. Um, it's, it's a, you, there's a, like this withdrawal feeling, right? There's, I'm not going to uh, be in this relationship, still love them. Okay, but I love myself more. Pain that part, sick. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Richard Pryor, mm-hmm. I love you, but I love myself mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. So how do I love myself more? I started singing to myself. I got a playlist. I can't remember the sister's name, but it's a song called Be My Own Boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So we've heard about self-dating. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? And what, what do I want my boyfriend to do? I can do for myself. Mm-hmm. I can dress up. I can wear trousers and a dress. I can go wherever and do whatever I want. And there's that. I began to wear men's, a, man, a men's cologne, not necessarily cologne that this person wore. I 
wanted to say something, but I'm not. <laughs> um, but I began to wear men's cologne because it was the aroma, the scent of a man that I mm. also missed. So then I started going to the sensory thing. Okay, well, I needed to get curly lamb pillows and I got sheepskin rug because those things felt good to me. I got a couple of throws so I get to wrap myself up in mm -hmm, comfort, mm -hmm. right? And then it's the, I'm going to take myself out to dinner. I'll do those things. I'll get dressed up for myself. I'm not That's going right. nowhere after this ball. I'm going to go see my mama. You're right. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but if I decide to go hang out with my daughter, I look at some eye candy. That's cool, but leave me alone, right? Okay. So there's this transition period. There's things that you can do, a person can do viscerally, um, mentally. Start reprogramming your brain. Start saying to yourself, I love you. That's right. Start recording these things so that you go to sleep to those first. things. Right. Write your affirmation. Mm -hmm. Do in your journal. Mm -hmm. And you can cuss and cuss him out in your journal. Do not go over his house. Don't, don't call the wife. Yeah. Do not call. Okay, so that's I'm, maturity, I'm, though. I'm, that is maturity. I'm, that's maturity. I heard journaling. I heard journaling. Mm -hmm. And I heard dating yourself. Mm -hmm. And you, you said something else. I couldn't connect what you were saying. Me it's the know. artsy, the artsy part of it. Oh. The how to get, get you to cope with what is going on in the situation. So much, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's okay. But, but it's the. Right, right. Up. What that? What does that do for you? Wrap yourself in this wool. Uh, what, what? You you miss when when he leaves or when you want to leave mm -hmm. the situation altogether. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a withdrawal uh, mm -hmm. withdrawal phase. Absolutely. So there's that. I want somebody to hold because you get out of that relationship and go into if it's not a married man, it'd be some unhealthy dude, exactly another unhealthy situation. Unhealthy situation yeah. yes. That's gonna make you. You're already sad. Then you're gonna be sad, prolonged. Then yeah. you're gonna get into another relationship and haven't had time to process what happened yeah. and look at the lessons that you can extract from it. That's right. He might have been the best thing, and it was just the thing that happened, and you got into it, and you wanted to get out. Or it might have been the lie, and you stayed thinking that he wasn't gonna lie again, and you lied to yourself mm -hmm. that he was not gonna lie again. If it start off as a lie, it's betrayal. Period. Okay. I, I, I you I said a lot of good stuff. I want to say this. I want to say this. By listening to you as being a man mm -hmm. and being a mental health provider, mm -hmm. be careful when you're weak, going through something, leaving a, a, a relationship that was very unhealthy, to show comfort in another man. Mm -hmm. Because you got to remember, you stated earlier, that men would prey on you. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you know when a man is really sincere about you, he don't want to hear about your past. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about it. Go find a girlfriend. Go talk to your sister. Mm -hmm. Go talk to your mother. Because he don't want to hear about it. But when a man constantly say, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more, he's, not, he's like a snake in the grass. He's he going to slither right up in you. I, I agree with that. We, I'm a man. Be careful. Be careful. Be be careful. I'm coming from a man's testosterone part of the brain. Some men do actually listen and they genuinely care. So I agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Listen, well, I, I do agree that they do pray, right, right. but then I do. Uh, I, but I also feel like they. I said, be careful. Like, yeah, just and be careful. And there are men that pray, like, and they are. Be be careful because. He's just taking in your information yeah. so he can become yeah. who he needs to be for mm -hmm. you. And then he's sending, once again, he's sending his representative to you. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to send that representative to you. And then when I reel you in, I got you. Mm -hmm. I would say, back to coping, have an affair. Not an affair with somebody else, with yourself. Mm -hmm. Have an affair with yourself. You know what? Like you said, get up. I get dressed for me. Yeah. I celebrate mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine, Crystal Easton, says, I choose me. Mm -hmm. Choose yourself. Make a conscious, intentional effort to choose mm -hmm. you, love on you, and however that may be. Going and getting a massage. Mm -hmm. Doing some gonging. Mm -hmm. Getting your nails done. Getting your hair done. <laughs> doing your makeup. Learn how to embrace those parts of you that make you feel good journal writing write a stage play write a poem write but that comes from 
you you know, they say surround yourself around people where that are going positive. You have to surround mm-hmm. yourself around positive people that are that you where you're trying to go, you know, or just gonna uplift you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I feel like again, that's true. Yeah. But then it's the flip side. But then I also feel like it's your mindset and your thought process and your maturity level. Because yeah. I can say some people, you know, they mature probably faster than others their mm-hmm. thought process for me i didn't start really com- coming into myself into my late 30s my mid 40s and then it's the, the people that you're around when i met alexis um some years ago she de- she started depositing um telling me positive things things that i did not hear growing up so when you are around different women and they're secure in themselves when you're around people that are not secure in themselves they don't know who they are Mm -hmm. who they are who they belong to then that plays a part in it so when you're around people that has positive things going for themselves and you're not and you say you're low one day this person is going to lift you up if you're you know but it's about your thought process Mm -hmm. as well and maturity less yes yeah yeah i appreciate what you're saying that you know, ladies, this is, <laughs> be careful from here on out because mm-hmm. that's the thing. On the flip side, there are a lot of positive men. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I have a slew of positive men who I refer to as my brothers in love mm-hmm. or even former people that, you know, yeah. people that I've had former relationships mm-hmm. with and we're continuing just to be platonic friends. And the thing that many of us miss growing up again is that coaching that mm-hmm. um, hearing those positive messages not the oh you're so pretty oh you're yes. so cute right mm-hmm. the brothers t- say hey look sis you need to scale back we didn't hear a lot of that but they do exist there's mm-hmm. a lot of brothers out here that would tell you the truth now whether you choose to listen because now you didn't it's kind of like the big the, the, the yeah. trans- theoretical model of behavior change <laughs> i know this thing <laughs> sometimes you don't know the pre-contemplation mm-hmm. i don't know that i don't know yeah, yeah, right yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah. like oh somebody told me now i gotta figure out i've done this for so many years and i gotta do this i gotta shift yeah. So I'm going to relapse. I'm going to do this yeah, thing. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah, to yeah. change. And then I got to maintain the change. What's the new change? Yeah. What's the new me now? So in social work um, and where I work, we have this thing called plan, do, check, act. Make a plan, do it, check and see if it's working, then react on it. Mm-hmm. So um, then redo it again. If you have to re- reinvent yourself daily, it's okay to start mm-hmm. over every day right. as a new day. It's okay. Don't apologize and say, I slipped up. With that, also cope. Create your village. Mm-hmm. Create your village of sisters that love Mm -hmm. you for you. Even when you're making a mistake, create that village for yourself so they can say, you crying? Okay, I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. You know, create your safety plan with your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you say, you know, it's 15 years, I'm not going back. Mm -hmm. What's my safety plan? I'm girl, I'm having a hard time. Can I come over to your house? Mm -hmm. Or can you you make some soup for me? Yes, I shall. Can we go? (laughs) Can I have a cup of tea with you? Yes. Can you just come sit with me? So sometimes we have to create our own safety plan amongst women that we love, that we feel safe with, so we can get through the um, tough times and those men, when we have those breaks in our mental health that we can say, you know what, she's not going to judge me, but she's going to love on me. Mm-hmm. You know, so you need that. So yes, that's circle. And I'm going to give you guys a little clip it, a little short clip for the future conversation <laughs> we're going to have with the men. My mother, my mother, she's an amazing lady. Trust me. Eighth grade education down in deep south of Mississippi. And I asked her question, and I'm number seven out of eight, so I have four older sisters. I sit down with them like, hey, this is a scenario. And they used to say, don't open yourself up when you're vulnerable, too vulnerable dealing with another relationship yeah. with your female friend. Mm. Because you think the grass is greener on the other side. They're going to listen to you. They're going to caress you. And next right. thing you know, you're in their bed. Right. Right? right? Not trying to be there. Right? And experiences. Yeah. I saw it happen. Really. So these, is this a whole other side of this conversation <laughs> that I can't wait to uncover. Yeah. This is very juicy. So let's talk about the long-term effect on, on women self-esteem and a self-concept being involved in a relationship like this. The self-identity piece, the 
I'm the side chick. Um, I'm the home wrecker. I'm going to be labeled as the home wrecker. Uh-huh. Um, that's devastating because, and then the, again, the adult adultery thing. Like, to be in love with someone and for that love to be, um, you know, to have, be attached to guilt and shame. Um, doing something right that feels right, but that is not socially accepted mm-hmm. because in this society, monogamy is, you know, is the thing. In other countries, there's a you know, conversation where, you know, yeah, if you can afford them, yeah, you can have <laughs> as many as you want mm-hmm. to. But the self-identity piece is, there's a constant battle of, am I doing something, am I, am I doing something right or wrong? And when you feel um, lonely and sad and depressed, you feel like you're doing something wrong, then you feel uh, that you know you are not valuing yourself. You you know there's a part of us that recognizes that that's a thing. Like ooh, I need to check in with myself. Am I doing myself mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. much wrong? Is, is it self sabotage? Is it um, uh, what's that when people cut doing cutting cutting, cutting yeah, themselves self mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. mutilate self mutilation and self torture mm-hmm. like well, where does that come from? Mm-hmm. You know, that's something to really, you know, pull away and say, well, what am I doing to myself? Yeah. If I'm that unhappy in something, but I'm still there, I'm abusing myself. Mm-hmm. And then you have shame and guilt on top of that. Mm-hmm. So that those are things that yeah. I've seen, things that I've experienced, mm-hmm. um, not being able to get away and, and, and framing the story of this is what it is. I'm stuck here. And then, again, those... those and- in a long term, where does that darkness take you? Mm, suicide. <laughs> suicide. Where does that darkness take you when you think, you, we think about karma? It's going to come back on me. Mm-hmm. You know, how you got him is how you're going to lose him. Mm-hmm. That comes back on you. That darkness is, um, social media can be a dark place. Right. So he posts and he see you showing all these family events and, he's with, and you sitting at home with your tea. In front of the TV, like he not with me. Right. Or but do you get the day before the holiday, or do yeah. you get the day after the yeah. holiday, <laughs> right. or do you get the next weekend because I'm going away with my family? So you have to say, where is your place at the table in this man's life, and how long does that? Am I willing to sit at this table? Right. You know, and most of the time you're sitting there alone because on mm-hmm. holidays he gonna be wrapping gifts with his uh, significant other. Mm-hmm. So you gotta say, what is that doing for me? Long my insides, my um, health wise. You know, mental health, physical health, spiritual health. What is that doing to me? Because you may have a friend say, well, I told you. Right. You know, I told you, so I know it's going to happen. But that's when you say, you know, I don't need that right now. You got to know long term, what does your girlfriend need? Sometimes um, my favorite saying is, don't wait for me to fall. Just be there when I do. Mm-hmm. So as a sister friend, long term, you have to look at my mental health may not be right. I'm not in a good place. But don't wait for me to fall because of this situation. Just hold my hand and be right. there. So you have to think about all that that's doing to your physical being. People get sick. You know, that loneliness can make you physically ill. Mm-hmm. And we don't sometimes don't equate it to that. And then on the other, well, I'm, I'm not going to say this piece, but on the other side, with the um, being the other woman, like culture, have as many women as you can. Mm-hmm. Younger people, and I'm glad we're having this conversation of unseasoned people, the um, polygamy is not new. Right. It's not new. It's not that's something not, that's new. That's not. It's not something that's new. I think because of our social media platforms, they bring it up to the, the main front. So younger people may say, you know, well, let's just all live together. They all living together. And I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we're going to segue into another topic. And I'm going to invite you guys back for this and to talk about the generation we X, Y, and Z. The things that I have heard in my office, they're going to be a whole other topic because they invite threesomes and foursomes and and all of this, yeah. like, you know, and it's tearing down their marriages and they crying. That's well, right. you wanted to do this. Right. You open up the door, yeah, right? Like, you created your I'm mental right. health, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So you and created your mental right. health problem. Mm-hmm. You invited this yeah. and now you created your mental health. Now, what do you want to happen now? Right. But we're going to say that topic said, and that's going to be more. something that's in the more. future, that's okay? More. And um, so what advice or support would you offer women who find themselves in situation and struggling like 
if you know a friend or a family member is in this, what advice will you offer them? Be still first. Mm -hmm. Be still first. Be still. Yeah, Sit don't still. Be so, don't be so still. Don't, don't be. We always, in our minds, always got to be busy doing mm -hmm. something, going, 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 and doing, doing. Be still, mm -hmm. breathe, and reassess the you that you are. Get to know you. Yeah. Reassess yeah. what you were school. What am I doing here? You know, I wasn't raised like this. I'm unhappy. How do I get my happiness back for me? Not on his terms, not on somebody else's terms. What is that my happy place for me? So I say, be still, reassess, and even Rashawn is big at journaling. Write things down. Write it down. What what do you envision for yourself? So write things down, what you want to see, and then don't have shame in calling on friends. Mentorship, you don't have to have, be a child to have mentorship. You can have mentorship with your, I need you to mentor me through this. Yep. I need you to walk, this is a journey. I'm on this journey, I'm on this path. Hold my hand, can we, can we go down this yellow big road together? I need to get to Oz, can you take me there? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Yeah, I need to get to Oz. Yeah. Anyone else want to respond to that? Well, for me, I think just knowing yourself, get to know yourself. Love yourself, trust yourself, be honest with yourself. Honesty is always, it always works if you're an honest person and being honest with yourself. And don't be so anxious mm -hmm. and just don't linger on to every word that that person says onto you. Do your research like Sean and Alexa said, you know. Um, ask questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. And just take your time because what's done in the dark always comes mm -hmm. to the light. And if it's for you, what's for you is gonna come to you. Mm -hmm. I'd say um, being still for sure and, and evaluating yourself and it, the, in part of the evaluation, it is writing the story. What is the story that is, is happening? Then write the story. What is the story you're telling yourself? Mm -hmm. And then write the story of what do you want your life to look like? Mm. It may or may not include him. Is it that you want to have a husband? That means you need to be ready to be a wife. Exactly. So what is looking like? Yes. Look like? Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be single for the rest of my life. Okay. Well, you want to do rotation where you got to figure out, okay, well, what do those series of people look like? But what do you look like with them? What are your boundaries? What are you mm -hmm. going to not ever do no more that mm -hmm. caused you grief and depression and unhappiness? Choose happy. You always have a moment to choose happy. Thank you, ladies, three wise, beautiful women for being a part of this podcast show. I thank you for a well presented conversation for the viewers. And I hope someone learned from this or take some coping mechanism to deal with their situation. So the word of the week to my viewers, remember your mental health matters. Take time to prioritize self-care, seek support when needed, and always remember that you are not alone in your journey. Together, we can break the stigma promote understanding, and create a world where mental well-being is valued and nurtured. Thank you for being a part of the important conversation. Until next time, stay inspired and keep shining your light. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of this. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you follow us on social media.